We always used to say, and my partner, I think, coined it, he said, we're in the transportation business. <laughs> we transport you from one place to another emotionally. Yeah. And there's nothing better than sitting in the theater, sitting down, getting some nice warm popcorn yeah. <laughs> and something to drink and just sit back and just go on a ride. Yeah. And that's what Top Gun did. Why did you stand in my way? You weren't ready. Ready for what? Huh? Ready to fly like you? No. Ready to forget the book. Trust your instincts. Don't think. Just do. You think up there, you're dead. Believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not going to make the same mistake. Welcome to Behind the Lens. And today, oh, what do you think when I mention some of these titles? Bad Boys, Beverly Hills Cop, Pirates of the Caribbean, National Treasure, Armageddon, Black Hawk Down, American Gigolo, Flashdance, Thief of Hearts, Days of Thunder, Twelve Strong, Top Gun, Crimson Tides. I could go on all day, and that's just the movies. Uh, television, too. Welcome, Jerry Bruckheimer. Thanks so producer much. Producer of all those and so much more. What, what do you think when you hear the, this list, your life passed before your eyes here? It's, <laughs> it's been a long journey and I've loved every minute of it. <laughs> it is an extraordinary yeah, journey, really is. to be sure, in this business, in this industry, as it's changed. It seems like it's changing weekly now, but you know, as it's changed since you began you know, all those decades ago. Yeah, they thought the you know, video cassette was going to end the business and <laughs> nobody would go to the theaters again. We're still going to the theaters. We're right. back. Top Gun brought them back into the theaters uh, last year, which is fantastic. Uh, so people are still paying money for tickets and, and watching it with a whole group, which is the best fun of all. Are you still energized as you were when you started? Is it still exciting to you um, doing this? I love it. I yeah. love it. I wouldn't. I couldn't do anything else. I wouldn't know how to do anything else. I'm very fortunate. I'm in this business, and just thrilled to be here talking to you and be part of this Academy cap campaign for Top Gun. And you know, you know, in the spotlight right now because of the nominations and the fact that it was the highest-grossing movie of the year last year and got the best reviews. And so it's a, a career moment. It was the perfect storm for this movie because it not only, as you might expect be a box office uh, sensation, but critically, it was, it matched that, you know, somehow it all came together on all fronts here, and now with six Academy Award nominations, and believe it or not, this is your first Oscar nomination. It, it is, and I'm so thrilled that we finally got one, it's really nice. <laughs> For best picture, obviously. Yeah, because it's, it's about your peers, and, and the people who voted for Top Gun are a lot of them I've worked with because I've been around <laughs> so long and it's always nice to be recognized for people you work with and people that understand our business and understand the artistry of Top Gun, how difficult it was to get made and and just the the fact that it took us what 35 years to bring it back <laughs> it was it was really a it was a a chore but a lovable one. Yeah you have tried I imagine with Tom Cruise yeah. at different points to try to bring this back. Not every movie, you know, waits 35 years for uh, a second edition, a sequel, whatever you want to call this. Top Gun Maverick, uh, Tony, the great Tony Scott, who is, you know, acknowledged with this, on this film too, which is nice. Even your partner, Don Simpson, at that time on the original sure. Top Gun, you have given credit here too. So you've kept that, that knowledge of what the first one meant all these years. Yeah, because it was so hard to get it right the first time. You work so hard on these movies and Don was such a big part of it and Tony Scott of course directed it and did an amazing job and Joe Kaczynski is somebody who came in and paid homage to Tony the way he shot it, the way he uh, uses lenses. He, there was a lot of stuff that Tony initiated that Joe continued. Yeah. And you are producer here as well as your star Tom Cruise who is not a producer in name only, as some actors might be, but he's the real deal here. He's a much better producer than Oliver B. He's, <laughs> made, he's fantastic. He works so hard. He cares about the movie. He cares about every aspect of it. Uh, there's nothing that Tom doesn't, doesn't put his hands on and make it better. Yeah. So why did it take this long? What, what did you go through to make this finally happen? And did you ever think 
it's never going to happen, that maybe its time had passed. I never thought that. I'm, I'm always hopeful. I, <laughs> I always feel that the, there's always a way to get something done. And Joe Kaczynski and myself went to Paris. Joe had an idea on how to do this movie with, with Goose's son. And we pitched it to Tom. And Tom said, look, it, I love this. We've got to do it for real. We got to put the the actual actors in the planes because we did it the first time. Yeah. Unfortunately, none of them could handle the G forces except for Tom. Right. We had some footage of Tom in, in the original movie, oh, yeah. but he said this time we're going to train them. We're right. going to train them for three or four months, put them in different aircraft so they could handle the G forces. It was really a commitment from our actors to do that. Can you yeah. imagine <laughs> spending all that time in these planes and they're I mean, they go up for two hours, they come down, they'd be soaking wet. If, if the director or Tom didn't like the footage, we sent them right back up again, and they did it all over again. Wow. So you got to give kudos to these actors who worked so hard to get this movie made the right way. I mean, it's really simple if an actor comes in and says, look, I, I really don't want to go up in a plane. Right. <laughs> you know, you can just put me on a gimbal and I'll be very happy. Yeah. But our actors went in there full force and said, I'm in for it, I'm in for this ride. Did they all say in their first meetings, oh, sure, I can do that? Or all actors say that they can do everything, right? I tell you, some actors were very honest. They said, no, yeah. I just I have a fear <laughs> of flying. Yeah. And, and if you're going to put us up there, it's not for me. Yeah. So that happens. But wow. they were honest about it, which was great. Yeah, it's amazing. Top Gun Maverick has been nominated, I think, significantly as well for its screenplay, not only by USC, uh, uh, which is you know sometimes yeah. highfalutin in right. what they pick, um, but also the Writers Guild and uh, at the Academy uh, uh, Writers Branch too. Normally that doesn't happen with a tentpole kind of movie like this. How come the script was so important and why is it being recognized now? The script is always the most important thing. <laughs> if you don't have a good script, you're not going to have a good movie. That's just the bottom line. If it's not on the page, it's not, a, as they say, not on the stage, but in this case, not on the screen. So between Chris McQuarrie and the rest of our writers, they just did a Herculean job to bring this, bring this home for all of us. Just the, the fact that you had to constantly change the stuff that was going on in the air. Mm -hmm. So there was always, Chris was there every day. He was a terrific producer and a terrific writer and worked with Tom and Joe. So the three of them really worked so hard on the screenplay to make everything work. And the reason the movie's a, it's such a success is because of the words, right. because of the story. <laughs> That's why. And so yeah. I'm so proud of the Academy and everybody else who decided to give us a nomination. It's, 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 it's brilliant that they got recognized. Yeah. You know, the Academy in recent years has gone through some tough times, not a secret. And I think part of the problem is they lost their way in recognizing movies that the audience likes that maybe they feel like, well, that's not award worthy. That's just what we make. You know, let's nominate some small art house movie instead. And I think this year, with this movie and Avatar and Elvis, you have these bigger box office hits that are also up for best picture. Well, look, at everybody who was nominated deserves to be nominated. They're all terrific movies. And yeah. the fact that we did so well and those other two movies did so well is, is terrific for the Academy to acknowledge that because in yeah. the past they hadn't. And look, it, it, the Academy is a group of artists and, and people who work behind the scenes on movies and they understand how difficult it is to make a movie right. and they know yeah. what goes into it. Yeah. So I think it's such an honor for me, especially at my age to finally be recognized <laughs> and, and it's important uh, yeah. that they did and I'm thrilled that that everybody kind of said all right let's give Jerry a nomination but it's really the movie it's not, it has nothing <laughs> to do with me but it's important yeah. I mean my god you've won every award yeah. and producers guild life right. achievement the, the David O. Selznick all, right. uh, every kind of award I've interviewed you before for two hours on your whole career right. at different things so you've been through getting honors in right. this business but now you're uh, getting honored for a specific film. Well, it's always about the work. Yeah. And, and the work on this movie, the audience validated, the critics validated it, and now the Academy validated just by nominating us. Yeah. It, it's, it's just wonderful to be here with you talking about this. It's my first time to be doing this after making over 50 movies and been in this business over 50 years. So yeah. it's been a long time coming. Did you ever think you would be? I mean, or did you, you know, I mean, with all this, is there a movie that you thought this is going to be a Best Picture nominee? 
you never know. It's really up to the Academy. Black Hawk Down? Well, the, the director, I think, got nominated, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So that was a, it's a wonderful movie. It also got excellent reviews, and it's a very poignant movie. Yeah. So I, you know, I felt bad for the fact that we didn't get nominated, but yeah. look, at, they made up for it. They nominated Top Gun. <laughs> That's nice. That's it. You know, when I'm looking at this, and I mentioned all these in the singular, but there have been so many sequels that you've done. If how important are franchises now? You know, in the old days, producers would just do it once and go on to some other movie. Then at one point, franchises really took over the business. Well, studios always some, love something that's pre-sold. Yeah. So like we're doing, we just did another Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And it's so great that Eddie's coming back mm -hmm. to, to, to Beverly Hills Cop. That's what's so wonderful. It's, it's for Netflix. Hopefully we'll get a theater release too. Yeah. But that's up to them, not for me to say. So they loved Eddie and Beverly Hills Cop. Now they're going to get experience him again. And he's fantastic in the movie. We're going to do another Bad Boys uh, with Will and Martin. That's exciting for audiences. They're really keyed up to see that again. And we're going to start another movie with Joe Kaczynski about F Formula One, F1, that Brad Pitt's going to star in. So oh, yeah. That, so that's coming up, too. And there's, a, and there's talk about another Pirates, and there's talk about another National Treasure. So all these movies that audiences have loved, it's like having a piece of candy, a really good candy. You want another piece of it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's what these movies bring you. Right. It's it's comfort food. It's you come in there, you know what you're going to get. You love the actors. You love the experience first the first time. And if you can do it again as well as you did it the first time, which is what we did on Top Gun, audiences embrace it. Yeah, and it's important. You mentioned Beverly Hills Cop to have that star, you know, on board. Like you had yeah. Tom Cruise here, and you have Eddie, and you have Will and Martin, and you have. All, all these elements, but it's important to have the original star, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's difficult to do it without him, but sometimes you're forced to. It's, right. It's unfortunate. But, you know, also the editing of Top Gun, you know, Eddie Hamilton, who, who I think got nominated, th he, had, he had 812 hours of film to go through to create that story. Can you imagine the amount, a mountain of work he went through yeah, to, to make, and the aerial sequence, I think he had 26 hours just of carrier footage. Wow. So to craft it and work, he worked so hard day and night to get this in shape so we could show it to an audience and eventually release it. And his work is brilliant. Why do you think the audience is so connected to this movie this time? It's, it's definitely dealing with uh, issues and things that are contemporary now and in, in ways that we're experiencing things now, not maybe of 35 years ago. In, in a, it's always about the emotion and the characters. Mm -hmm. And what we did so well this time, our writers did, and Joe and Tom, is to, to craft a story that's based on the emotion of these characters and what they're going through in their life on this very dangerous mission. Yeah. And and the interpersonal relationship, the fact that Iceman is, is, has this crisis, and it's, it's just something that so gets you to your core, emotional core. Yeah. And people, when they see the movie, and I've, I, when it first came out, I sat in the Chinese theater <laughs> in the back and watched for the first weekend and watched an audience enjoy it. They were having the best time. Yeah. They were laughing, they were crying, they were applauding throughout the entire movie. So, we did something right and that's what we do as filmmakers we try to do something that will not only f give you entertainment but also educate you a yeah. little bit so i think this is a, a journey that these characters went through and it's a very positive journey at the very end of the movie so you feel something when you walk out of the theater which is so wonderful which is it i experienced it at 10 in the morning in caesar's palace right when they first showed this i think that was the first screening yeah, it's, it's anywhere. what it was and it was for all the theater owners and, and they're very cynical and they're very cynical so, yeah. but they love money yeah and so <laughs> they look at the screen there and you could see i mean i walked out of there and i said this is more than i expected immediately started writing this is headed to the Academy Awards, which I never say about these kind of blockbuster things, particularly about sequels. So, but it got me emotionally, and I could tell it got that audience, that jaded audience in that Vegas. Was the, that was the goal. That was, that's what Joe wanted to do, Tom wanted to do, Chris wanted Everybody who worked on the movie was always keyed around the emotion of the characters and the journey they took. Yeah. That's the magic of the movie. All the flying and all the wonderful stuff we did, that's the icing on the cake. That creates more of the drama. But it's what the characters are going through, interpersonal relationships, and how they resolve their relationships at the end of the movie. 
Yeah, that's definitely true. It's a great cast beyond Tom, obviously, mm -hmm. too. And I love Jennifer Connelly right, in it. She's beautiful. That relationship, you know, it didn't bring back Kelly McGillis. Right. You didn't try to, you know, rubber stamp the original movie, but find new ways in, I think. Yeah, I think the key to it was, of course, Tom. Tom is just... Works so hard. He's such a good actor. He should have been recognized. His work is so subtle. He should have. So he didn't get a Best Actor nomination. No, it, I was it's surprised, actually. It's a shame because he certainly deserved it for that performance. Uh, but again, the movie stands on its own, and he's a big part of the movie, obviously. He's the, yeah. he's the one who carried the sword for the film from the very beginning. Yeah. I'm cur I just read yesterday Barry Deller, who I know you know and sure. have worked with at multiple studios yes. that he's been at, you, you've been at in right. different ways said he thinks the movie business is finished mm -hmm. and he thinks the Oscars are finished. And it was right. such a dark statement. It was in Los Angeles Magazine, so I had to read it. And it's just a cynical way of looking at it. What do you look at this business now? Look, Barry's a very smart man. I'm not, not going <laughs> to contradict him. But I look at it as there's, there's room for everybody. There's mm -hmm. room for streaming. There's room for theatrical. But it... The audience is shifting, so you have to shift with the audience. Mm -hmm. And you have to make movies that will draw them out of their house and go to that experience. Right. And that's what we try to do. We try to make films that either have actors' stories or sequels that audiences really want to see in a group. Comedies are great. Horror movies are great. Yeah. You know, franchises like Beverly Hills Cop or Top Gun, or people want to see it together. It's a group experience, and it's a wonderful group experience. Yeah, and that's the secret. You sort of started this interview by saying they always said, you know, this is going to kill the movie business, right. VHS, uh, yes, yeah. and all of that's going to kill. Of course, originally television was going to kill that's the right. movie business. Nothing's killed it. We thought now the pandemic was going to kill the business, and you and Tom stood firm. I think you had five different release dates for this movie. I think you're Hoping right. to get it out. Yeah. I have this analogy that I, I don't know if I picked up from somebody else, but you have a kitchen in your house, right? Mm-hmm. But you go out to eat. <laughs> and it's the same thing with the movie business. You have a television in your house. You can watch streaming. You can watch network television. But every once in a while, you want to go out. So we got to drag you out and give you something <laughs> that's so special right. that your friends say, you got to see this. you got to see it. And if it's not available anywhere else and you want to talk about it with your friends, you go see it. Right. And that's what happened with Top Gun. And that's why... You stood I'm, firm on we, it. We stood firm, and it became a global hit. It's, it, the grosses foreign were larger than domestic, without China and without Russia. So you can just imagine how this movie impacted the world in a very positive way and shows how wonderful our technicians, our writers, our actors are that permeate the world and show what we can do as filmmakers. Yeah, and that's important, you know, because I think the theatrical experience for anything, it makes a difference for me. I, I, you know, when I look at a movie, as a critic, they show you a lot of stuff on links and things with your name emblazoned across. It's just horrible. Um, but I always look at it and I go like, well, that's like a TV movie in a lot of ways. But if I see a movie in a theater, um, I, even if it's going on streaming in a week, it's a different animal to me. When the audience first sat in Top Gun, the people who loved the first one were sitting there like this. <laughs> yeah. you know, show me. You know, show right. me. W yeah. What did you do? The minute they heard that gong <laughs> yeah. and they saw those jets taken off, they, all of a sudden they relaxed. They said, okay, I'm going to be in for a ride. Right. Yeah. And it's, def you know, it's definitely that. Um, you said you did Beverly Hills Cop. I think it's Axel Foley, uh, yes. it's called, yes. uh, for Netflix. Right. And it's up to Netflix about how they want to distribute it exactly. if they're going to do theatrical. Yeah. And generally they do kind of nominal things. Right. Um, but the world constantly changes. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> That's true. We're seeing yeah. all these deals made with yeah. major filmmakers. And I just read about Amazon's doing one with Ben Affleck and Matt Damon where they're going to give it a major global release before they run it on there. Well, we, we got the same thing with Apple on our Formula One movie. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. We have a, a long theatrical release prior to going on streaming. Is that because Brad Pitt is... Everybody, Joe, myself, Brad, all want to be All released. wanted to do it. It's a big international sport. It's, it's a big, big story, and, and it should be seen on a big screen. Yeah, well, you did Days of Thunder That's with right. Tom Cruise. Yeah. So you're no stranger to... No, motor racing. Motor racing. <laughs> um, but that's exciting, too. I mean, you've done so much. When I talk about your career, too, and you went into television... Yes. 
and had hit after hit CSI, currently Fire Country. Right. Uh, and obviously Amazing Race, for which you won, I think, 106 Emmys uh, that you have at home. Or Something some, like that. I mean, you, <laughs> you have a lot of Emmys from that. What attracted you to uh, move into television in that you know, kind I was, of way? I was watching what, what ER was doing and some of the, the producers and directors were doing and I said, we can do that. We know how to do that. Because mm -hmm. there was some really good television. And so we got started and, and Anthony Zyker, who created CSI along with, with Carol and Ann, said this is feature television. Because mm -hmm. that's how we approached it. We used a feature director, we used cinematographers that had done movies. We, we made it look different than most television. And that, so when you see the commercials, you see Billy Peterson, they say that looks a little different. That's a little different for television. Yeah. But it was the stories and the characters that carried that series for what, 16 years and it's back on the air again doing very well. It's interesting with CSI and I think around the same time Law and Order um, started doing sequels, right. franchises. The television business changed in that way and suddenly you had CSI Miami, CSI this one, CSI that one and you know uh, that's a different world for television. Yeah, but it's always about your actors and, and your writing. The writing's got to be great and, yeah. and you got to get the right characters and the right actors to play those characters because they're in your living room. They become part of your family. And what attracted you to reality television so early on? The idea of a, of a race <laughs> around the world. It's something I wanted to see. I try to make anything I do, I try to make something that I want to go see. Uh -huh. And spend like because you have to you have to live with it. I read every script. I watch every episode of, of our TV shows, and there's been wow. over two thousand of them yeah. that I've gone through. Yeah. And I want to enjoy that process. I don't want to say, oh, this is not something I would never see. This bores me. That's not the way to do it. Right. I mean, that's a lot of reading and a lot of stuff to take that kind of level of care for every single episode. That's well, it's important, otherwise yeah. your name goes on it. You want it to be right. Yeah, e exactly. Um, I know you're doing Bad Boys again. Now, Bad Boys, the last one, was just before the pandemic. Right. It was like number one. It was a smash hit yeah. after all those years right. as well brought back. And then the pandemic sort of shut down theaters. Yeah, exactly. That was disappointing, I imagine, at that point. Of course, but very fortunate for us. It was. I think it was the highest grossing film of that year Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, also. so. It, it was sad we didn't get a, a run that could have gone longer, but we did very well. Yeah, and so now you're doing it again with Will. I got to ask yeah. you the question. This is post. Uh, this is Will's first movie right. since the Academy Award incident, the slap, as they say. Um, so, what are your feelings about that, and and, and bringing him back on a big level here? Well, Will is a fantastic individual. He's a talented artist. He's a very caring individual. Uh, he's a friend. I, I love working with him. That is not the will I knew in that moment. And I don't think anybody has escaped life without doing something that they regretted. Mm -hmm. And obviously he regretted that moment. Uh, he's talked about it and, and we all make mistakes. But he's a fabulous artist and a fabulous individual and you can't judge him on one small incident. And so Unfortunately you, it was a big incident, cause yeah. but it was a small Everybody incident. Everybody was watching yeah. around the world. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're comfortable um, bringing him back and... Oh this, yeah, he's yeah. just so good at what he does and, and actors recover from things like this because yeah. he's a good individual and he'll, he's a caring individual and he's somebody that you can rely on and he's just terrific. Would you bring Johnny Depp back in Pirates? You intimated that who, they're talking about that possibly yeah, another Yeah, I, I think Johnny is another friend and an amazing artist. And, you know, we, again, he, you go through things in life that you wish you hadn't. And, right. and, but he's still a talented artist. Yeah. So when you look at your whole list, do you have a favorite? Is there one movie or, or one movie that you go like, damn, they didn't go see that one like I thought? There are a lot of those. But, <laughs> but, but, uh, no, they're all your kids. They really are. You work yeah. so hard on them and you never know which one's going to pop and which one isn't. If you'd have told me that Top Gun was going to be a billion dollar movie, I'd stare at you and say, really? Do you really think so? Because <laughs> I don't know. The only people that know is the audience. When they go see a preview, or they, and, and Top Gun previewed very well, but it wasn't our highest previews. Uh -huh. But yet, it's our highest grossing movie. So it's very deceptive previews sometimes. Sometimes yeah. you can have a fabulous preview and nobody goes to see the movie, yeah. and vice versa. You can have an okay preview. And we had a very good preview, but I've had ones that were through the roof and sometimes people didn't come. They so don't. you just don't know. Yeah, it's always tricky yeah. in that, I think, you know. 
Uh, research in general, I think, is tricky. It is. Because you're asking, you're sort of leading the audience to. When we so. did the first Top Gun, we screened it in Houston, and it was right after the shuttle disaster. Yeah. So we're sitting in that theater, and it's dead silence. <laughs> there's no applause. There's no laughter. There's nothing going on. Yet when we got the results, they loved the movie. <laughs> but they emotionally couldn't respond in a verbal way. Or, right. But again you, you never you sit there and you're, you're sweating because nobody's moving and and mm -hmm. nobody's laughing and then you find the results and it was great well the first one is an Academy Award winning movie people forget it one best song that's right um, and I'm gonna bet right now the second one's gonna be an Academy Award winning movie too it's gonna you know what it wins I you know I'm not gonna jinx you but I think you're going to uh, see some uh, action there on Oscar night. With From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Please. Jerry Bruckheimer, thanks Thank so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's <laughs> always a pleasure to be interviewed by somebody who understands our business and <laughs> knows how to interview and ask intelligent questions. Oh, it's uh, it's so nice. You do your homework, which is, which is sometimes rare. <laughs> <laughs> well, we try.